Hey horse lovers, Pat Pirelli here, and this is update number eight with Mr. Style, and today we're gonna go through the colt starting skeleton that I shared with you at the Road to the Horse, except the human, except the saddle, except a rider, and except a bit. So today is gonna to be the first time we ask him to carry a bit in his mouth. We're gonna put a little snaffle bit in there with no reins, and gonna share with you how that skeleton works and how we just keep going through the blueprint, going through the skeleton over and over again, layering, layering, layering on uh, patterns of success. Hey horse lovers, Pat Pirelli here, and I'm here to help you have a better horse life so your horse can have a better horse life, and so is Mr. Style. So um, this is update number eight. So what I'd like to do is today is go through the skeleton, the colt starting skeleton that I shared um, last week in uh, uh, um, Italy with 21 of my students. We started gave first rides to 21 horses. The youngest one was uh, two and a half years old. The oldest one was 11 years old. So everything in between got their first saddling, their first ride. Here's how our skeleton works. Number one, accept the human as a friend and as a leader. You can see here, we got the friendship going. We're starting to learn about the leadership. Number two, accept not just the saddle, but any foreign object that I have trust in me that I'll place this rope over your back, I'll place this pad over your back, the saddle. So you're gonna accept the placement of the saddle and then the wearing of the saddle, because some horses don't care what you throw on their back, but boy, they don't like that cinch going around their girth. Other horses, they're really worried about, him, like him, about things going on him, but once it's on the girth, no big deal. Number three, accepting a rider, and uh, we've got to accept a passenger and then a guider, number one. Number two, uh, got, you know, we've got to learn once we're up there that it's okay to be up there, and that's what the passenger means, but the guider then starts either using the rein or you'll see I'll use a stick or something to push him around with and stuff like that, and play the driving game. Number four, accepting the bit. The placement of the bit, so today is gonna to be his first time I'm putting a, uh, gonna to try to put a bit in his mouth and uh, then learning about the process of bidding for the rest of his life until he um, becomes a fully assembled horseman, all right? So accept the human, accept the saddle, accept the rider, accept the bit. Each one has two sessions, two things. So let's start here. We've uh, done lots of things here, playing with him in the, uh, at Liberty, playing with him online. We need to get him to where when we throw something over. And here what I, here's what I want you to see. If I put my hand on his withers and I throw this rope over his back and give him a hug and face this way, put my back to him, put it underneath, throw it over. Can you see how the, that might be how I get on? I might put my foot in, get on, throw my leg over. Now we're facing the same direction. So that's where that might come in value, both for you, even with your horse. Of course, this is Mr. Style, so we're gonna go here. We're gonna go here, throw that rope over, give him a hug. I'm gonna do the same thing with the pad, do the same thing with the saddle. Now I'm gonna straighten my arm. Watch how I do this. I'm gonna lift straight up. I'm gonna ask him here to move over and put my hand on his withers without me moving my feet. That's not just a, a uh, uh, what do you call it, a, a trick, a, a party trick. That is a, a move that is a re really important, a technique that you know, anybody's gonna start starting Colts probably better learn. I learned it from Tom Dorrance and Ray Hunt and Ronnie Willis. Underneath, turn, give him a hug. Underneath, turn, give him a hug. Now we're riding off into the sunset. Can I get the picture? So let's try it here with the pad. And I'll try to be aware where the camera is, but it's the same thing. Put that rope over my arm, put it under here, let him have a chance. Turn, face, go like that. Did you see him flinch a little bit? Okay. If he flinches a little bit with the rope, he's going to flinch more with the pad, flinch more with the saddle, and more with you. <laughs> so don't go, oh yeah, a little, just a little worried that oh, don't work. I would be concerned about it. So accepting the placement of the saddle, which is a foreign object. You see right there, he's trying to put himself out of position. He's, I don't know. I don't know. Well, let's see, let him smell it until he kind of. Now, I've been in Europe now for two weeks. So it's been three weeks since I've 
really played with him, done anything. So I want to kind of keep doing this, not to desensitize him, but to give him a choice. And see there, he's stepping out of position. When I offer it to him, I want him to tell me, I, I know what's coming. No big deal. I'm going to put my weight on my left foot, push off with my right, just like when I get into the stirrup. I'm going to make sure that I can touch him all over the place because when I go on, who knows how clumsy I'm getting as I'm getting older. I might, again, I want to put my saddle and my pad on like I put my hat on, not like that, okay? So we're being very aware of our partner, what's going on here. I'm gonna take now the saddle and I'm gonna put the pad back on the saddle and I'm so I can go pad again, pad again, pad, then saddle with a rhythm, all right? Watch how, maybe observe how I hold the saddle. A lot of people put a saddle on a horse like this, like a grizzly bear, or I'm gonna put it on just like I put that rope over, that pad over, just a nice soft. And uh, if you've ever been around draft horses, you might call this a harness sling, because draft horses who are oftentimes 16, 17, and even 18 hands tall and big and wide, and you've got a big heavy set of spaghetti called harness, you don't just put it up there like that. You got to sling it and get all that stuff going and go over their back. Got to land on them nice and soft. So the way I'm placing this saddle is what I call the uh, a draft horse sling, yeah. harness horse sling. Okay, you ready? And there he's examining the saddle and everything. Here we go. Let's see what we got. All right, let's go here. Put that on there first. You gonna stay in position, buddy? Oh, huh? Gonna kind of keep going here until that's okay. Gonna go here till that's okay. One more time, and then I'm gonna go one, two. One, two. Okay. Smooth. We gotta think fast and move smooth. Not slow and sneaky, smooth. Now I'm gonna put my arm up, keep my feet still, lift up, ask him to place me over there. Hang on, come on, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Come on, you can do it. Move me over there, place me over there. I want him there to put me in position. Not me be running around, sneaking around, all right? I wanna be able to get all the strings ready here. We're gonna check the cinch. Who knows what horse it was on last? I know I don't. So what I do is I put my cinches up in such a way that it, a lot of people, they do this and they, they put, they, they do this and to make it easy on themselves, they twist it, okay? They twist that and put it on, but I don't. Ray Hunt taught me to turn it upside down, put it that way so everything stays straight, not twisted. Because when that gets sweaty and then that horse sweat dries, it just stiffens your leather, okay? And then you got a problem. All right, here we go. Place everything down. I'm gonna push the cinches under just to make sure it is not too long on the other side, all right? So let's put our left hand under here and see if we can't ask him to replace me in position. I like that. So I'm going to ask him to move over here so you can kind of see a little more what I'm doing. Okay. That a boy. So now I'm going to use my left arm here for um, reaching for the cinch. Because if I use my right arm, see, I'm gonna put my head here and my boat, my rear end out there. Whereas if I'm this way and he bumps into me, I'm gonna bump into position instead of into out of, into a bad position where I'm gonna be falling on my rear end and him kicking. Now I got my cinches so that when I pull it, it all goes like that, smooth. So when you put your cinches up, roll them underneath, you see? So like that, doesn't seem logical, but watch how slick it works. 
when I reach under here, pull here, one pull, and look, you're already there, okay? These are all the little techniques and uh, that are important for everybody to become a horseman. Good habits, whether you're starting a colt. Now what I like to do is I like to, to, to go downwards just to get it snug, not pull upwards for the first time. I like to use what's called Packer's Knot, where all I do is I roll that back through itself so that it makes that get a hold of the saddle. That's what California, the mule packers use that knot. And they wouldn't use it if it would come undone, but it comes undone very easily. All right, I'm just gonna leave all that there for a second. Now I'm gonna push down on his withers and pull up on the latigo just a little bit so it makes sure it's snug. So I would say he has been saddled now 12 times, you know, plus or minus would be my idea. Oh boy. So I'm going to move him around here a little bit, um, see how he goes. Good job. All right. See if that bothers him at all. He's never, he's been pretty, been pretty happy with how he accepts the cinch. Gave him some, you know, we started real soft with the bareback pad and some things like that to give him an opportunity there in Kentucky to the road to the horse to, to not. Now, watch what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna kind of go here and do a um, kind of a jump rope. Say, don't look at me unless I ask you to. Like if he overdoes it there. All right, let's see if he'll lick his lips here. There we go. See, he's going, oh, he doesn't just want me to turn and face every two seconds. All right, come on over. I'm gonna tighten the cinch a little bit and then I'm gonna play with preparing him for the bit. Again, these are just little updates. There we go. Push his feet around and say prepare for, there we go. Push down on the withers, pushing down harder then I'm pulling, and if there's any breathing, I try to breathe, time it to the breath. Breathe in, then when he breathes out, that's when I tighten. That's why so many people have trouble when, they're, when they tighten the cinch up and they say, oh, he held his breath. Well, it's just they didn't time it to the breath. All right, he didn't time it to the breath. So let's prepare him for his first time uh, having a, a bit in his mouth, all right? so. How are we going to do that? Well, let's start with something, you know, bits made out of metal. So it's, uh, it's, it's not alive anymore. It's a foreign object. So I'm going to get him to make sure we can just put our fingers in there and say, Hey, no big deal. See, here we'll go play with those lips and stuff and prepare him. So let's just say he kind of gets worried and that metal clanks him on the tooth the first time. You know, I mean, these, these days, um, people are getting smart. They take the kid to the dentist and, and they buy him an ice cream while they sit in the dentist chair just to get their teeth cleaned or, you know, I mean, something so that the first do, half a dozen times going to the dentist means, oh boy, not, oh no. When I was a kid, it was every six months. Oh, how did I get four more cavities? They, you know, drilling away. So uh, let's take this like this. Let's take this bit of this rope and pretend like it's a bit. Touch his thumb. Now use this hand up here, the one up here, to pull it in his mouth. So let's just practice going in and out. In and out. With something soft. Now he's chawing on it. We'll get to spit it out. Nothing no harm, no foul, huh? Touch. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm taking my thumb and inserting it. And then when he opens, this hand times it. So many people try to shove the bit in. So what I try to do, go here like this. You know, 
Uh, 40 years ago, I gave my first clinic, but it took me 10 years of really doing things mechanically and rough and tough with horses until I ran into a real horseman, Mr. Troy Henry. And I was his protege for five years. And when he graduated to Horseman's Heaven, when he passed away, then I did my first clinic in 1982. He passed away in December of 81. And ever since then, I've been going over these little simple habits and skills. And it's amazing how many people don't have really good habits and skills. They're not aware, but the horse is aware. Most people don't know what they don't know. And, but the horse knows what we know, and the horse knows what we don't know. And if the horse knows what we don't know, and we don't know what we don't know, we got a problem. We just don't know it yet. There you go. That's a little better. So now let's try, let's try putting the real thing in. Okay. And all we're going to do, there's no reins or anything. We're just going to let him carry it. And I want you to notice that I have got the um, head stall as loose as it can be so that it goes on him really easily. And then I'm going to snug it up in a little bit. So here we go. First time in. What do you know? Now watch how I do this. I'm going to pull this forward, push his ear forward. Slip it over here. Pull this forward, push his ear forward. This is his first time. Now I'm going to now I'm going to put it on to see if it fits. I'm going to let him wear it. He's going, what in the world have you got in my mouth? We're letting him kind of a lot of people. Say, you know, you got to put a bit in tight so that he don't, can't put his tongue over it. Well, I don't agree. He'll find a, a way. It's like when, you, you know, people, they get braces. They play with it with their tongue and they can't help it. And, of course, when them braces come off, they can't. They keep licking their <laughs> front of their teeth. Mm, oh, good. I can't believe my... All right. So I just leave that in there and let him. So I don't do. I don't subscribe to the one, two, or three wrinkles in the mouth. Um, if you were a horse, I don't think you'd like that either. We don't want it so loose that it falls out, but I want it loose enough. Let's try one more up and see what it got. That might be too tight. Let's see. I want him to play with it. And so that's what we're going to do in this session. Allow him here to play with the, the bit in the saddle for a little bit. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll do that and I will um, uh, let him eat with it. Let him, you know, just wear it for the day. So what I'll be, what I'll do after I'm done here, is I will um, just leave it on him and go let him graze and mess around there. Yeah, it's nice. It's fairly loose. It can't come out, but it's not tight either. Let's tighten this saddle up one more time. I like to suggest to people to tighten their saddle at three different times rather than all tight in one time because the horses get bracy about that. And the back cinch is a cinch. It's not a it's not a decoration and a lot of people they kind of treat the back cinch like it's a decoration. It's it's got a purpose, you know, and in, in the in the Sierras in the mule packing business, we we put a latigo the same on the back cinch as the front and tighten it both of them down just as tight. Yes, the back cinch is just as tight as the front cinch. Because it's got to hold that pack going up and down. It's got to keep the back from lifting up or shifting or moving or, oh my gosh, you put 125 pounds on, of dead weight on a horse and he gets, um, gets kind of worried. You, you know, next thing you know, you got a problem. So let's take here, let's see what we got here. Our little stick here. Find something fun here we can play with. Let's try this. Let's try a carrot stick just for kicks and giggles. A flag. Like my little, I think you can get them on late night TV <laughs> all over the place. But I like keep it here. See, I keep that over there so that it doesn't... Um, uh, the horses can't 
bite it and knock it over and all that stuff, but it's convenient as long as I've got that little thing there. All right, Mr. Style, let's play with that saddle. Let's see if we can walk, trot, and canter with that saddle on and not be bothered about it, huh? And still stay connected. That's nice. So many people just chase a horse in a circle on a... Uh, he's, he's looking, he's perpendicular to me, so I've got a, I, He's got a little trick he likes. He thinks he's got to go to the right and then turn left suddenly. We want him to learn to maintain gait and direction. Look where they're going. Horses are pattern animals, so we're looking for positive patterns. Let's keep moving. Positive patterns that have rhythm, relaxation, and understanding. And now that we've done this, um, I said I, this is about his 12th time I've saddled him, but what I've done is I've played with him several times online and at Liberty um, since I've been home, because again, I had this darn two tendons that grew together from my old bronc riding days and uh, this yet misspent youth, I guess. And um, let's see if I can move him here. Anyway, so I really couldn't ride or I didn't want to ride anything that it might need to grip with. They told me don't pick anything up heavier than a cup of coffee for a month. So that was for the first month around here. Now I'm, horses can move and defecate at the same time. So he doesn't have to stop to go potty like dogs do and people do, luckily. But um, there we go, good connection. That's really good. Is he still fussing around with that bit, wondering what in the world is going on? How are you doing there, Mr. Style? So again, if we can understand how important connection is, and then and like, if you go imperative, important, and if we can. So to me right now, what I'm going, what's imperative is the relationship and the connection. What's important is that he maintains gait and direction and look where he's going. Again, I'm gonna see if he'll do it without turning left, good. And I want him to go and until I ask him to do otherwise, to maintain that gate, maintain direction, look where he's going. And I want him to do more while I do less, see? So I play a little game. Don't make me pick these sticks up. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Just stand here, and smile, and talk to you. And if he maintains gate, I leave him alone. If he doesn't, well, we do a little something. But we use the attitude of justice here. I wouldn't do that if I were you. I would keep going. I would keep going there. See, didn't make him feel bad about that, but it definitely wasn't just going to let him do what he wants. The connection's still there. He's asking questions. Can I come in? I want him to be like a boomerang. I want to. I want to send him out, and then I want when I want it back. I want to go shoot, 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 shoot. Come on back, okay? Not just chasing him around here till he's tired. That a boy. I like that. He's. And I, so if I can, I'm going to get him to uh, do lots of different things to make sure he gets his hind legs. So let's ask him to canter here next time he comes around here. And, and I'm, what I want is I want him to make sure he gets the right lead, not the correct lead, the right one. And, and his hind leg is also on the same lead. There we go. See how the right hind leg is? is on the correct lead, he oftentimes, when he gets a little confused, he's apt to crossfire. There, I like that. So they've got a, you know, consistency is a great teacher and variety is a spice of life. Now, there, we're not gonna do that. See, we don't want that as a pattern. We don't want that. When we get bothered, we don't want that. We want maintain gait and direction. See, that's the kind of pattern that it gets you thrown over the right shoulder. And this is where, you know, just remember, horses are equids and zebras are equids. Donkeys are equids and they have migratory patterns. They have all kinds of patterns that they follow. They follow trails. So when we're playing with a horse on the ground, we're, we're developing, we need to be developing positive patterns. That's what's going on here. It's about them understanding and having some positive patterns. And you can see he's got that one little thing there that, that he wants to go to the left. So he, he 
might go around there like that and kind of duck out. So we got, that's the kind of stuff I work on online and liberty. And what I'm going to do, now you notice also his mouth is getting quiet. He's, he's kind of forgetting about that bit in his mouth. So I'm going to take my 22 foot rope here and make a set of horseman's reins out of it. Not as, just, just for convenience, it's not as, as uh, good as the riding hackamore because the balance of it but if i can just get this to where it's you kind of understand how this works if i give myself a lead rope here okay where that goes over the top there where we've got the reins and i give myself 12 foot of, lead, of rope so let's let's go here six and six is 12 okay if I make my reins, that's usually the right thing. All I have to do is just th thread that through there like that. Okay, that's really all I got to do. Just bring this one through there. Now I've got a situation where when I'm on, when I'm on the ground anyway, I've got a lead rope. When I'm on top, I got a set of reins just like the Horseman Tackamore. So, um, in uh, Mexico, they call this hakima. All right. In angles, we call it a hackamore. And a hackamore is when you've got not just, see, the no nose piece is called a bosal. But when it's all set up with reins and a fiador underneath where it's holding it from going over the head, the whole setup is called a hackamore, which is another name for a bitless bridle. All right, so I'm going to tuck that in my thing and I'm again accepting the rider means accept the horse, accept the mounting and the dismounting. Again, I'm going to tighten the saddle one more time. Horses are pattern animals, so we want to create positive patterns. And the only way I know to do that is have good habits. So I'm going to get myself where my arm goes under, put that over my elbow. So as I go up here, and when I go to put my foot in the stirrup on a young horse, I don't go to put my foot all the way in there. I try to make it, and I try to make sure he knows I'm coming. So I'm pulling on that there, so he braces himself. What I'm gonna do, put it just my toe in there in case it doesn't go good. I'm gonna step halfway up. I'm gonna rub him on the other side if he feels good. I'm going to step on and I'm going to hurry up and wait. And I'm going to get into the habit of not just get on and get going. So I'm going to hurry up and wait here. And what I'm going to do is bend his neck around to the left. There we go. Bend his neck around to the right. I want to be able to bend him. So if I can stop the right side of the horse, I can stop the whole horse. The left side can't run off by itself. So this lateral flexion is really important. Bending of the neck, bring the head over and get this to where monocularly, because he's got an eye on each side. All right, so I'm gonna just ask him here, just to be okay with me up here. All right, now I'm gonna ask him to move his hindquarters first by taking and lifting the rope to my other shoulder, the rein, excuse me. I'm going to go here. I'm going to take this toward this shoulder. So I'm going to bend him, and the energy is going up toward this shoulder, opposite shoulder. It's an indirect rein. Lifting, push with my leg a little bit, move the hindquarters first. Then I'm going to lead the front end out to the side. See if I can get him to follow the feel under with his feet. Good. Move the hindquarters on this other side, bend the neck. Good job. And he's bending a little better to the left than he is to the right. I like to, to emphasize the better side rather than the not so better side. Let's move behind quarters. Yeah, there we go. And lead out here to the front end. See if you'll follow that feel. There we go with the front feet. Good job. Good. All right, so let's see what we got here. Let's. Smile with all four cheeks. Smile with all four cheeks. Turn the smile into a squeeze. 
we please. And let's see if we can go around here. Asking him. There we go. Again, I'm gonna smile with all four cheeks, squeeze, smooch, put a little rhythm up here. You never see jockeys kicking a horse. There's, they're putting rhythm in that stick, pushing the back toward the front, and then go to sleep in the saddle. Let's see if we can get that. Let's go here again. Let's see if we can get a canner. There we go. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with that. And what we're going to do is I'm going to get prepared to ride outside here in a moment. And smile, squeeze, smooch if I please. And I'm going to ask him here now to get, see if he'll bring his nose, zone one toward me here. And I'll ask him if he can just accept that and ask him to back a little bit. There we go. Just a just a little. There we go. Just like that. So I'm hoping you're having the time of your life like I am and happy trails to you because Mr. Style and I are going for a ride. <laughs>